month ago, the National Enquirer broke the story that a massage therapist in Oregon claimed to have been sexually assaulted by Al Gore. Since then, the media has snickered, rolled its eyes, and steadfastly refused to report the story. Instead, they've trotted out excuses in Gore's defense, often treating it as a simple choice between defending Gore's honor and indulging in base celebrity gossip as if there weren't the real possibility that a real 54-year-old woman had suffered a real and violent assault. I get it. Sexual assault is scary. We don't want to think about it happening to us or anyone we love, and we don't want to think about it being perpetrated by someone we respect. Instead, we weave ourselves a soothing fiction. She probably wanted it. She shouldn't have expected anything different in her line of work. She's probably in it for the money. And of course, He's such a good guy, he would never do something like that. It's natural to want to think of the perpetrators of sexual violence as monsters. It's a monstrous act, after all. But sexual predators aren't monsters, they're people. They can be kind and handsome. They can kiss their wives in public and mean it. They can be brothers, boyfriends, best buddies, talented film directors, beloved athletes, trusted priests, and yes, even lefty political heroes who seem like genuinely nice guys. In my essay at thenation.com, I show how the excuses used to discredit the victim can be easily debunked. But the entire question of credibility is a red herring. Why, in cases of sexual violence, do we assume the victim is lying until proven innocent? If someone claims to have been robbed or kidnapped, We treat their accusations as credible enough to report on unless there's clear evidence to the contrary. Um, Barring that kind of evidence, it's the media's responsibility and or ours in cases of sexual assault to take these allegations just as seriously. I don't know if Al Gore did what he's been accused of and neither do you, but I do know this. When we ignore these kinds of cases, we send a terrible message to the victims of powerful men that they're not important enough to care about. And we send those powerful men the message that they can treat women however they want, as long as they look good in a suit and can create a compelling PowerPoint slideshow. I'm Jacqueline Friedman for Grit TV. 